All right, uh, you're in, close your eyes. Close your eyes real quick. I'll close mine. You're in middle school. You're in like sixth grade, right? You're in the lunchroom. You get that little tray, right? You buy your lunch. It's like a buck fifty, or actually, it was like two. We've only got forty-five minutes to do. This. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you eat your lunch. You drink the milk. You have this carton of milk, right? You drink the milk down. Then you're about to leave the lunchroom. You fold the milk carton in a specific way so that it creates like an air bubble in the milk carton. You put it on the floor and then you slam your foot on top of the milk carton as hard as you possibly can. And it creates a sound as if a grenade just had gone off in the in the school cafeteria. And everyone stops and <laughs> they look at you and then you quickly pretend like it wasn't you at all and then you just... That sounds really personal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This sounds like one nothing I've ever heard of. Also, like, <laughs> I, when you say slam your foot on something, that makes me think of, like, hitting the side of your foot. Like, stomp is so, the so like, word. Uh, yes, you stomp, stomp the milk carton. I'm I sorry. Just, I didn't mean to. I can think of, all I think of is, like, you as a kid, like, grabbing your <laughs> knee to get leverage and, like, just swinging your foot like a club <laughs> like this. at a milk carton on the floor <laughs> making noise. And everyone looks over at you, and you're sitting on the linoleum. With a disjointed Like, leg. holding <laughs> on to your like knee, a... yeah. covered in milk spray. <laughs> and everyone's like, what the hell is Noah doing? Like and then you said, you and just... then you said, guys, that was not me. <laughs> I'm like, are you sure? You say, did you guys hear that too? <laughs> so, hey, Noah, do you know what time it is? What time is it, Steven? It's time to talk about death and taxes. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Let's Talk About Death and Taxes, the only show hosted by me and two lawyers that is very anti-jazz. Um, my name is Noah Chrysler. I am not very l well versed in legal things, and therefore I ask these two legal professionals about the legal profession, um, and they share their knowledge with me. Guys, can you introduce yourselves? I am Steven Schreiber. I am a Gemini. I've been <laughs> practicing law for nine years. Um... I help people get their estates together and also make people laugh sometimes when I do it. My name is James Champlin. <laughs> it's fair. It's just that energy changed. It's very dull all I'm going to try to mi mix a different <laughs> fact about myself in every time. That sounds great. No, this is just I, I think part of my persona for this episode is that I'm going to be very mysterious. So I'm just going to say my name is James Champlin. <laughs> Don't ask any more and questions. He's and, and he's mysterious. That'll can, be we, a um, can we say you that you say, do have a law you, degree, though? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. All right. That, that is honestly the best thing I want to hear from a, my lawyer. <laughs> Are you a lawyer? Don't, don't worry, about, worry it. about it. Just chill. Right. Um, so that's something you hear from a date. A, a, Okay, unrelated. Once aside, is that my friend and I, Melissa, we well, we were teachers. We read this book, this dating book, The Game, which is wildly misogynistic. Oh, yeah. But it would it would be, there would be like insane I've chapters, never read but that. about pressure. We, we would do dramatic <laughs> readings of it. Oh, I, I I have I the copy in my house now because it makes me laugh. But like, what's the guy's name? Many I, things I, uh, are like trust me or or the Miss or, Mysterio or the fuck yeah. His name. Is. His name? It's something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. 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 Again, I feel like I it's obligated. Obligatory? Obligatory. Obligatory. I forgot how to speak all of a sudden. So you've read that term, but you've never heard it. So yeah, that's it's exactly right. Okay. Now trying it out on yeah. us. Uh, we'll do, we'll do it's it's, it's obligatory to mention that Ben Franklin, because I've said it every episode, Ben Franklin did say that the death and taxes are the only two things that are inevitable in life, and that's why we made a show about it. Because, you know, if, if it's a problem that everybody's got to deal with, maybe we'll get some people to... Uh, sometimes you can get out of I taxes. thought this was you ramping up to our obligatory disclaimer. Oh, and that that's this is legal too. entertainment and commentary and not legal advice and should not be construed as legal advice. We're not your lawyers unless you call us. You're and not hire being us. very mysterious right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're not your lawyers unless you think maybe you want us to be. Exactly. But then, you know, that's the conversation. If you, if you want us to be your lawyer, call me. How does that work? You know, figure it out. I like that, James. That's How cool. do you get a hold of us? Figure, figure it out. out. Google it's it. Not, it's, not too, around. <laughs> it's not too needy. Right? <laughs> like, it's like, I'm cool. I don't need you. <laughs> what in kind of, in what? terms of the game, your frame is what kind really, of, really strong. What kind of cases do we do? No, we do we do cases. We do cases. Yeah. For clients. <laughs> okay, I'm going to clarify those things because they're important, and this is a piece of sales material. Uh, you can give us a call, 404-939-7562. We would love to represent you and get your estate planned so that you can die with confidence. <laughs> is, it, is it a cool fact? Yeah, whatever. Maybe. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> um, if, if you like your kids and family, if you, if you don't, that's cool too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can also send us an email, info at modernestateplanning.com. Or if you want your question featured on the show, you can email us at questions at let's talk about death and taxes. Uh, com. Um, yeah. Again, this is not legal advice. This is more legal entertainment. So don't take any of this advice and go act on it, which James just said. Let's read the game. Follow that advice. Yeah. It's a hell of a book. We endorse the game. <laughs> oh, I don't uh, endorse the game. I oh, endorse no. reading the game. I do not. <laughs> if you, especially in dramatic readings at parties. Um. Oh, man, I fun. I was gonna share some thoughts, but I think that it's not a good. In the future, maybe I'll bring it with me and I'll just read like a were you, passage. Were, wait, 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 wait! Were you gonna share some thoughts with us, and then you realized that we were both anti the game? And no, you know, like, I, to share I your thoughts. The game. Look, I think there's a lot of like obvious, like blatant misogyny in that. Type there's of a shit, subchapter right? oh, yeah. named like, "Make the Host Say No." It is the worst right. thing ever. No, written. and the whole. I mean, <laughs> wow. I've. Yes. I mean, all of that comes out of like you know, like when people were like, like when like. Like old pimps learned how to like really like run the prostitution ring. That's really where like it, a lot of I that shit. That book. Like I read a memoir of a pimp and it yep. was bonkers. Yep. No, that's the other like famous like pickup mm-hmm. book out yeah. there that like everybody's like like obviously like super fucked up. But I do think that like I don't know. Again, oh, God, I feel like I'm on the losing side of this battle. Uh, but like We're I went to anti-pimp. college. I went to co- oh, yes, anti strongly anti pimp. You know, don't, sec- anti, if you're gonna do anti human trafficking, if you're gonna do sex work. It should be empowering and feminist mm-hmm. yeah um mm-hmm. <laughs> that said i went to college with a bunch of dudes at a tech school where not very many people had a lot of confidence and those types of things even though they are dripping with gross awful horrible things i saw a lot of dudes like you know actually like take some strides and try to better themselves in order to like w- eventually attract a girl to like date them but that's and, like, not bettering yourself it's it's making yourself a weapon yeah, yeah. i find that women tend to want to date people who are who know but, things and but are I will not say disgusting. this: if if somebody, if there's someone out there who reads that, <laughs> you got you got an endorsement and from is Chester. a little like, misguided. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cross those two thresholds, and then you can work on yeah. everything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Like if, if it gets you the confidence to be like, oh, I can talk to people, and and they're not going to just run away. Then fine, you use that, but you know, maybe just like not that book. Yeah, yeah but yeah, like, not if the you, book. If you find yourself, book, if you find yourself negging somebody and being like, those shoes look great, but not as good as they could look. <laughs> Like that's, yeah. that's when, like, yeah. you should don't run away. Don't people. Don't yeah. manipulate people. You should read the book more as, like, a, oh, crap, I'm doing this. You better – I should stop. And Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a great point. I also if don't mean to – If you see yourself in the, in, the, in the game, you really need to question your life choices and who's influenced your – interacting skills even in that book though in the end of the book the end of the book is about how he has a mental breakdown and how like hey this is obviously a flawed way to live your life oh, and like yeah, he goes yeah. to a mental hospital and like like gets help for like how he like the fucked up ways in which he views women and now he's like a very like pro like i think he's married and has like a exactly and he's like anti Wait, all of the shit what? that he did he's yeah like a 180 yeah same for tucker max and some other people they turned super boring in their 30s wait tucker max ended up boring yeah I don't know who that is. Who's Tucker, that? Oh my God, Tucker Max is one of the great Duke Law alumni. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. He, he was Duke T- Law. Tucker Max is so gross. He wrote the book "I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell," yeah. which <laughs> they made a movie of it and it flopped. But the movie, the, the book is so fucking gross. It's like it's, it's, it's like all of his gross frat boy exploits. Mm. But he like brags about having gone to Duke Law from New Jersey. Which New Duke Law is in North Carolina, so he would just show up for the final exams, which was. Not an unusual strategy, actually, when I was in law school. Oh, there yeah. were definitely people, when you saw at the final exam, it's like, have I, I didn't know you were taking this class. Yeah, no, I, I had that <laughs> happen to me a couple of times, too. Yeah, where it's like, I didn't know you were in this class. <laughs> Maybe, wow. I, and yeah. for one of those classes, I might have been, been in that person. People were like, oh, I didn't recognize you were in here. And I did yeah. pretty well in those classes. Because professors, you're better off not having heard them talk. Yeah. You're, just, just learn the content on your own and walk in with the yeah. unadulterated knowledge. And That's then get true. a better grade. Some professors are really bad at explaining stuff. But I the wish itself was like a joke. Yeah. But I was in Alaska Law Review. And I was in Anchorage interviewing a lawyer, and she we were talking about it. And she was like, "Oh, Tucker Max, he was my good friend. We were roommates." I'm like, "What? Stop! Screech! Stop! We were talking about Tucker Max. Forget the Alaska Law Review. Now it's <laughs> Tucker Max time. <laughs> I was like, I need to know everything you can cram in a Tucker what, what Max. What was talk. he? Well, I mean, why was he significant as a human? Um, he was. A, I mean, he he had like an entertaining way of presenting yeah. things. Like he gotcha. was a good storyteller. Okay. A good storyteller. Um, about did he have like 
like a show? And it was, was a like, lot no, of like. I don't think he did. He had books. I feel like it was like a gotcha. I think he was a blogger. To start. Oh, he did have a blog. It was a he blog the... that he turned into some His books. His blog is so gross. It Dude, might but, still yeah, be up there. Gross. It was like. It was I... like a lot of like toxic masculinity. Yes, that's like... the word I would use. Yeah, those are the words. Yeah, it's. It's almost I couldn't describe any of the blog posts because it makes me secondhand embarrassed to describe it. Yeah, I don't want to describe any. Of it. I mean, I remember reading it and I remember being entertained and then I remember reflecting on it and being like, <laughs> "This is messed up." Ugh. Yeah, we were being the same. same. <laughs> but but 15, 15 years later, it's like I hope the website's still up in its original form because it's a nice artifact of like the the early mid internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mid internet. Let's shift gears God, to I what love, this I show is mid- about. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's let's get this train back on the well, track. I would say, let's throw some estate questions from the old internet. That would be great. That sounds great. <laughs> I don't right. know how to get there. Usenet wants to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah Usenet. Netscape. Let's go into Usenet. Um, <laughs> law dot this dot news uh, dot and law. I did my will in my typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> Can I telegraph my, word my will in? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can I send it in Unicode? Yo. Can, <laughs> can I telegraph it? Beep, beep, God, beep, those beep, are great beep, times. Beep, I miss using it. Um, <clears throat> here we go. On a very different note. Reddit, I guess. This is a very new agey question. Here we go. Um, awesome. What happens? Also, this is great for all those like influencers out there who in 20 years are going to look back when these problems start becoming more apparent for everyone in the world. Um, what happens to ad revenues on YouTube when the creator dies? That is to the their question. estate. It goes to their estate. Potentially. It, very it could go short. to... I mean, I guess it depends. I don't know what your YouTube's terms are. That's I mean, a good point. Yeah, you could contract something else. But YouTube I would might have terms of, regarding your death. YouTube might be like, now it's ours. But probably not. It's not. For it, the most part, right still, uh, they go to your assigns or heirs. Or, and theoretically, YouTube may at some point have an option where you can assign like an actual beneficiary or someone who can that's actually cool. take over your account. And... Mm-hmm. For ad revenue things, I guess that's that's really between – if it's just the issue of checks flowing in the mail, then whoever your estate is would get the money. But if it's like yeah. a beneficiary or a signed issue or some contract with YouTube, I guess it can get theoretically I, more murky. I feel like this is something where the answer is going to be buried somewhere in the, the terms of service. If a client yeah. came to me yeah. to ask about that, we would, un- we would make the unfortunate job of loading up the YouTube terms of service, <laughs> and then we would do a find yep. for death. I'm not going to read that wire to wire. No. We're just going to do a control but, F. And then, <laughs> so I think it's for your, for most of your users, it'll be in the terms of service, like mm-hmm. what's going to happen or some kind of framework. And then for like big producers that actually have like the the contracts or the other agreements, yeah. then you might get into something but a little bit a, more defined. But that is an important question to note. If yeah. that is your source of income and your family or whatever depend on that, yeah, yeah. then you may want to talk to your attorney about that when planning it. Yeah. Um, so, so would that be the same thing for like you know television royalties? Like if like that's Jennifer more Anderson, clean. If, if Jennifer have a lot Anderson, more law now. if Jennifer been Jen, wow, whew, Jennifer Anderson passed away, uh, and would and her estate sh- would get that, get the royalties. Of yeah, that's a lot friends. legally cleaner. Cool. Partly because there's not just one company um, mm-hmm. doing that. And what if YouTube? I don't know. What if something happened or an ownership change or turn? It's, it's it's way more dynamic. Whereas those agree, Jennifer Anderson would have particularly signed a negotiated contract with that company in all likelihood. Right. Yeah, it's something where like somebody is signing a contract, they're probably going to have an attorney with them or some other representative who's going to look through that contract versus YouTube, which, you know, for a lot of these influences, like, you know, a 15-year-old kid clicking accept and <laughs> yeah. then turning on their webcam. I don't know anyone who will cl- read – anyone who says they read the terms of service, I think they're a liar. Yep. One, and if they actually read it, I think they're boring. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't trust them. I don't trust that's them. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. Even – you know, that's coming from a lawyer who's <laughs> – that's are the, hilarious. Maybe the most suspicious people of all, <laughs> the people have the time I to read the I, terms. I don't read it, and then I just assume that it's something nefarious. What would you do? Like, 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 let's say you read the terms and you don't like them what, yeah. what, what are you, you gonna, gonna do, do? yeah Either not use, use the service or you have or, 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 i would love to see someone print well, out I mean, the terms of agreement I, I, black I've, market or um, redline it and then send it back to youtube's <laughs> console and try to yeah. haggle it out well Pretty i cool. um i mean like i've i've had things come up where i ended up going back and looking through the terms of service for like different things that i'm doing and then seeing what their policy is and then i've stopped using those services really like, i've, I've like, definitely oh, it's, really, it's really a good idea to stop um, when you're like oh uh, Chinese well government. i mean this isn't like an, like an online service but like like i quit riding megabus 
What's Megabus? On. That's a bus company. What? Megabus? I don't it's know, like, man. Megabus I, you don't know like, Megabus? Yeah, no, Megabus you, get, you like hop regional. on, you go to... No, it's like, it's like, it's like it, it greyhound-ish. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. So I used, to, I, used to ride it, the, cool. I used to ride it from like Illinois back to yeah, Ohio like, was it, for stuff because it was, it was so cheap. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, there were double-decker buses. What? That sounds cool. And it was And it was like... And Wi-Fi back when that was novel. Yeah, it was cheap. Let's get back to... I think the concept, though... And it was less likely that a creepy person would sit next to you. Slightly less likely. Extraordinarily likely. As uh, I wrote Peter Pan buses in New England, which might have been the grossest buses I've ever been on in my life. Spring, Massachusetts wins the worst bus station in America, I think above Port Authority. I've never heard of it. As we, You're not missing anything. As we continue to, you know, uh, get d- dive on oh, yeah. into the future. Oh, oh, but, but this, this. Hold on. So, yeah. so as, we, as we continue to yeah. progress into the future and like being a content creator becomes more of like a refined, like, or like a real, uh, you know. Um, a job? Thank you. That's a what business? I, this is really in the back of my I was trying to fish for that. No, a career is what I'm oh, saying. Career. Right? Career. Like it, you know, it becomes this validated thing. I think this is a problem that more and more people are going to have to like solve, right? Like, hey, yeah. I, I've created all of these videos, um, or you know, I have my, even a, like an Instagram, right? What if like, twelve my, people watch this podcast after I die and I get money from it? Right. Like, where are those royalties going to go? And, and so the answer though is to it, it generally. Oh, they're going to say to you, which would make me laugh. Be nice. <laughs> I was like, Can I have oh, a yeah, yeah, I know the yeah. answer that goes to me. Um, like, cool. Okay, but so it goes to the estate. Um, Another question: If you get a check from somebody, um, if you if you find a check, okay, let's say uh, a check comes <laughs> in. I'm getting murky. You find a check. I I, I find found a check. my friend found a check. Let's say James is YouTube famous. Unfortunately, James passes. I'm sorry, That's James. Too bad. It what was, did I get YouTube famous for? What was I doing? Uh, 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 you make opening toys. You make mallards. You construct mallards oh. out of wood. That's what you do. Oh, do I true. carve it or you, do I build it up? You d- you do, do you use your woodworking knowledge like to create. Am I exactly? Like you, okay. You make, you make the okay. chairs or the mallards or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You make right. tons and tons of mallards and you're the mallard guy. And when I'm doing the woodworking video, do I have like annoying background music and like do I no. narrate the whole thing no. or is it just I like an I nice it's like, ASMR? It's minimalist almost. commentary, so it's mostly oh, silence God. with just like woodworking ASMR noises, but then also like you do. You died in a mysterious wood making accident that became your most popular YouTube video. Because <laughs> was I on YouTube? <laughs> was I on YouTube live? Yes, it happened. It was yeah. really tragic, but okay. the sounds were somewhat calm, though. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you were really okay. quiet about it. As your carotid was severed, <laughs> yeah. it made a really nice gushing noise. Sorry, this is really dark. No, no. But, but, but all the ad revenue, people were like... People were like, that was your most popular video, and then it led all his other videos. So, James but your is gone. Is so they go into my back catalog. We <laughs> yeah. we yeah. are, some for some strange reason, we get his check. It's, it's mailed to the office. I'm your state attorney. Because, There's a check that yeah. comes in. Uh, with James's name on it for let's say ten grand, can we t- deposit that in the estate? It would be part of the estate, so I'll just take it and give it to the executor and put it in the estate bank account. Okay, yeah. so, so you can cash a check if somebody's gone. You can sign. Oh the yeah, your estate would. So if yeah. you had a will, for example, the beneficiary, the money would ultimately go to the beneficiaries of the will, or if there was like whoever the heirs were, if there was an administration, well, eventually it would go through the estate. Well, the check would go into the account and then be distributed according to the terms of the state. Gotcha. So, and that's ongoing. It's not something that is a one and done. It's like it's no, ongoing. It's just, you can leave the estate open for as long as you want. Like Michael Jackson's estate might be open forever because long, every time someone clicks that Spotify thing. Or, yeah. Let's see, let's see like, less shady example. Prince. Prince's estate will stay open every time he gets a residual when you mm-hmm. click a purple rain or something. Yeah. It go That little thing goes to his estate and the estate just keeps issuing out checks. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like I think that some people's depressingly their estates are worth more after they die. Yeah. Like even like people mm-hmm. when everyone die like Whitney Houston or people have like these spikes in their popularity then it makes a lot of revenue for their estates that then yep. have to get and go to their heirs. So yeah. Or so there you go. Or trust so your your kids and your kids' kids will consistently cash in on all that mallard money. From all <laughs> well, at least your poor wife will have something to comfort the pain. <laughs> all the mallards I've made. <laughs> yeah, all the mallards and the blood check. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what a great clip. Oh, man. I'm sorry to watch that one on Facebook. Honestly, if you get, if you get into mallards, I will totally buy like a mallard for the I thing. would take one mallard. I'll like, make you guys mallards. What oh, kind of my you want God. Uh, maple? I don't know. What's don't a good know. mallard wood? What, pine's the cheapest wood, right? Make me that. Pine is cheap. Yep. <laughs> I don't want cheap. I want a quality mallard. I don't know about you. Oh, oh, you know what? Oh, I've actually got oh, mahogany. I want ooh, like a. Uh, I may have thrown it away. What threw what away? I had like a nice piece of scrap, six inch by six inch pine. Like it was like a big, big piece. 
Cool. And I could have carved that, but I think oh, I threw it away. That sounds so I would have cool. done a chainsaw carving for you. Oh, that's, that'd be cool. You can do chainsaw carvings? I would, How come this has never okay, come one, up on the show? If you made it, you could record. Well, that would be YouTube This has never content. come up because I've never tried chainsaw carving. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this but is YouTube like, I guess you're right. I know I it's, anybody it, can make a chainsaw carving. It's a, it's a carving. thing, yeah. and I have a chainsaw, and you're I'm a willing chainsaw, to try. You're a chainsaw, piece of wood. So it lends yeah. itself to chainsaw I could, carving. I could try. Can we record cool. this? Can you, can you, in your workshop, to set up your phone, record this. We need more content for our social media. No, you just want to catch the one where I bleed out. <laughs> Okay, get all that. You have to record Mellow. all of it because one, the chainsaw company could have made some sort of light, could have made a defective chainsaw. And we need well, that evidence. actually, I use uh, I use an electric chainsaw, so it's gotcha. actually safer because when you when you release it, it stops like almost oh, right away. That's good. Do you want, you, it'll, it's less likely you'll kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. It's great. My professional opinion. You'll come is up with at least nine fingers. Mm -hmm. As a marketing professional, if you made a YouTube channel called like Champlin's Mallards and like you just uploaded Mallard videos all the time, it I made think an you'd Etsy blow store. Up. That would be. I think you'd blow up really quick. I've actually don't give them ideas. I need a little. I need. I need a search. You're like Stephen. I'm leaving to go make mallards. I'm really gonna take. That would actually hurt my feelings. I gotta. I gotta take this mallard gig full time. I gotta hit the road. No, it was right. Because a lot of basic mallard money. A lot of basic housewives were spending like a thousand dollars on your mallards. And you paint them. And you can make the mallards like twenty minutes. You paint them. You name them. You make little personalities and backstories for each one. This is Larry the mallard. He's an accountant. Honestly, and he loves that, I would Bespoke work for your ma mallards. I would work for your mallard company. <laughs> like yeah. in this world of mallard chains. All yeah. right. But anyway, um, how do you tax? I'm gonna restart. Taxidermy, because that could I could also do taxidermy. <laughs> Dude, bad taxidermy is really easy. I <laughs> like yeah. I haven't worn my contacts in a while and they're like dry and it's tough to read things and i also this show is mainly a dive into noah forgetting how to read the english language so enjoy that okay <coughs> i still got your own has to read <laughs> yeah i'm sorry you can read if you want oh no fuck that so it's called <laughs> it's like... let's talk about death and taxes <laughs> subtitle noah can't really read good <laughs> no, noah's read descent good. into not understanding english <laughs> it's like zooland <laughs> the yeah, for the exactly the kids who can't read good. um cool that's Steven a great re movie you're good yeah, I was gonna make sure no fires had burned. Uh, gotcha. I'm sorry. I, I think we're know. good. Okay. Sorry. Um, give me a countdown whenever you're ready. Three. Two. Oh, you know what? It's gonna be good. Uh, oh wait. She's. Oh yes, but I was six or seven. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Um, how do you tactfully ask someone to be included in their will? <laughs> wait a minute. To, to leave them shit? Like, yeah. You don't have to ask me at all. For the hey, man. Like to actually ask their permission to leave them things. Here's a really good example. Steven, am I in your will? No. Steven? I would like to be. Steven, okay am I with in you. your will? <laughs> no. But maybe, uh, but now you said it, I'll throw in like five for you. Thank you. <laughs> like, like a crisp $5 yeah, bill? Like crisp thank five. you. Thank you, Steven. I appreciate I'll Lance to like, your I'll put, understanding. I'll, put the, I'll clip the $5, I'll clip two $5 bills <laughs> to my will and trust. So he okay. doesn't have to go to the bank and, to get and it. And we'll go ahead and uh, execute a codicil. And then like, but don't spend it because I could change my mind. Oh. And anytime before I die, I can change my mind. So okay. stay on my good gotcha. side. Five dollars on the line. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That is how you tactfully ask to be included in a will. Oh wait, ah. how to ask to be included? Yeah. Oh, I misheard. I thought it was how to include someone. I was like, oh, it's easy. No, no. How no, to no. ask to be included? So yeah, it's it's less about legal stuff, more about like personal. Oh, a, there, a, there isn't really a tactful way to do that. I think because I like to ask with no back when you're no background. when you're asking someone to be in your will. Not only you're you're implying like one. I hope I survive you. <laughs> I plan to outlive you. And two, so. and two, when you finally die, I would like some of your things. <laughs> I've had an that's, eye on your stuff. That's a tough conversation to and spin appropriately. I yeah. do think if there's like a specific like heirloom that you think is really cool, yeah. I think the most you can do is make how much you appreciate that heirloom known, okay. but it's still gonna be a little. You have gauche. to lay that foundation. <laughs> like even yeah. my parents, I'm not gonna be like, hey, <laughs> hey guys. So like, yeah. make sure I'm in there. Okay. Once yeah. you're in there, it's like, yeah. if nah. if I burn the bridges with my parents to them, dear mom, dear dad, if you're listening to this podcast, please cut me in. <laughs> if I'm not, like, I think I like, think that's a really yeah. good angle though of yeah. like, hey, like I 
really, really appreciate this thing that is important to you. Mm-hmm. Because it's important to you, it's important to me. Therefore, I would really, really like to make sure I that... I really like, want to know what this relationship is. Maybe it's a grandma, right? Like, oh, hey, grandma. I remember it's a lot easier to I make know. that request. Yeah. If it's like your girlfriend or something, or your like... Your rich ra- girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> or like whatever. Frankly, weirder. I think it's almost a situation where... It's icky. It's icky. I, I think it's something where, like, if you really want something out of someone's estate, like, because, okay, so for me, if we're just talking money, there's no tactful way to ask to be included in right. someone's will or to, like, ask their family after they're gone for some money. But, like, as far as, like, something that means a lot to you, it almost is, like, and that's just talk to the sense. family afterwards. Yeah. But, yeah. Because, but, like, there's just no tactful way to really get it. Once you've laid it out there, or not laid out there, once you've, like, hinted or have a relationship with this person, that's about all you can do. If yeah. relationship's not that strong, I, I, like, I don't like, know. A will is or just steal, so personal. Or, or the other plan is if it's a discreet object, just make plans to steal it. <laughs> just, just, Again, uh, legal not entertainment legal advice, commentary advice. and not advice. If it's like a small object, you just like, keep your eye on it. Just put like a little like a like a stick like a post a note on underneath it. This belongs to Sheila or Property something. Property of Steven. Um, or <laughs> yeah. a really good idea would also be if if like the person is ill, you you offer to buy it from them. And oh, then that's you, nice. you transact it, and then you just don't. Oh yeah, pay yeah, them. you can, yeah, you can buy it, and then you don't pay them, and they're like, "Hey, where's the money?" And then you just, you just keep putting it off until they die. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. okay. I think right, that you, is you, 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 about equal oh as far as like that's post, awful. post date the yeah. check. I think, yeah, can you can you cast <laughs> yeah. a check in a month? <laughs> yeah. It's like I have two weeks. That's <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Well, because I mean, if we're imagining like a nice way to say when you die, give me your stuff, we might as well <laughs> contemplate. Just doing yeah. stuff like that. Give me stuff now, You're, and I'll never pay you. Exactly. I'll pay you. What is it like? I'll pay you Tuesday for a cheeseburger today. Is that the old Popeye? I don't. I've never cartoons? heard. Is that an no? idian? Nobody. Oh. It is. It's a. It's like a quote. They, a bird in a hand is worth two cheeseburgers on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't got to be a dick about it. <laughs> That's <I'm sorry>. plausible. <laughs> um, but yeah. But anyway, more, okay. Asking people. Yeah, yeah. That, that Probably never a good. So much in evidence. Well, there's. There's so much behind that that we yeah. don't know. I what about, wish there was a story because that question is like so open ended. I I can speculate, and it's fun to speculate about what who they are and what they want. Yeah. Give me, give me. All right, let's all take an angle of like this would be appropriate, right? I'll go like first. Your parents, okay. and you're like, hey, mom, I really want this piece of art. Yeah. In yeah. particular, or something we're gonna like that. we're gonna improvise a little bit here. Uh, that's a good that's a good example. Yes, and <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, I'll go first, right? But just your the the concept is you're going to make a convincing case that doesn't paint you as an ethically terrible person, uh, and you're talking to someone trying to convince them to write you into their will. Sound good? Here we go. I'm gonna go first. Um, hey, uh, grandma. Let's assume it's my grandma. Uh, hey, grandma, I've been trying to start this business for a very long time. I love you so much. You're the best, and I know you've always supported me. I need half a million dollars for this business to really take off, and like, I love you so much. You know I love you. You're the best. Uh, How do you think this is going? <laughs> this, feels like, this feels like potential undue influence. Yeah. To rest. No, 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 no. We're just going to cut you there. You're no, bad, but it's I'm asking grandma for a loan. Okay. It does doing a business uh-huh. transaction okay, where you right. actually pay grandma okay. back. Okay, I failed. Anybody else want to take a swing at this? <laughs> there's probably, there's no, probably so as, as I a think, probate I lawyer, think we have you... to avoid any, because typically asking someone for, to be in the estate plan, if they're an older or a vulnerable person, yeah. creates the layout of already the successful objection to the will. Okay. Okay, so that's bad. That would that it's, would be an objected will, and I actually if she to, wrote the well, will, I wouldn't well, get much money. It's not inherently yeah. bad, but it make it raises red flags. Yeah, um, especially the closer you are with them. I incidentally, the more it creates an impression of undue influence. Mm-hmm. Um, your best case scenario is actually being at a distance from that person and straight up balls, whatever, being brazenly enough to be like, "Can I be included in your will?" It, it, it will land like a brick. <laughs> but, Lead balloon. But it's technically the most appropriate way to do it legally to support the will. Okay. So my – so as an example, so yeah. uh, growing up in our living room was an old Edison, like, phonograph. Cool. And it's this, like, really cool cabinet piece, and it was always there in the living room. My little brother loves it. Mm-hmm. So he actually, like – 
brought up to my mom. He's like, hey, I really like that Edison. You know, I, I know you're using it, but, you know, eventually if you're not using it or if you decide you don't want it, um, let me know. Does I'd it be happy work? To take Does it, it. Is it like a... I have never heard it play. That's so cool. Um, yeah. We always had it um, next to the door as like a... like A showpiece like, or like, whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> like mail on it. <laughs> um, but, you know, but it looked really cool. cool. So so what he, what he did is and and this wasn't him trying to tell her mom leave it to me in the will yeah um but it was more just like hey if, if you're ever looking to get rid of that and you're not sure what you want to do with it like I, i'll take it yeah it's a lot oh, that's yeah. Nice. That's yeah. Like easier so, so she's gonna leave that to him that's in the will and i'm gonna contest in it in the will in a sense like you're already <laughs> like someone like if you're already their child or you have the relationship with them yeah. then it makes it easier to yeah. Okay. This is this is one example where I can imagine being asked, and is if if they actually are like your parent, and you have like a falling out, mm -hmm. and you got initially excluded from a prior will, and you made some sort of reconciliation, and entirely symbolically, it's like, hey, I would like to be in your will again, or something like that. Maybe yeah. that would be something. Ooh, and then you could be like, even if it's only for like ten. Exactly. Bucks, I just want to be like remember. Yeah. I just want to be part of your family. Again. Yeah. 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 And but, then, because you're being so nice, they're gonna just like cut you in fat, full share, full share. yeah. Boom. Get your full quarter third, yeah. yeah. But, but I love it. If you're already in the will, it's easier to make a particular grab. Like honestly, my parents, they're they're they, they're dumping stuff on me, and they used to dump stuff on me anyway. They'd probably be happy to get rid of any crap in their house. They're like, yeah, yeah. can I get this piece? Of, or I was like, better yet, I'll top you. You can take this and an old couch. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you can have the phonograph once you take all these boxes of your shit out of my basement. Exactly. <laughs> my parents, my stuff's in a pod somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> do you guys hear that? Well, honestly, da, 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 if you asked me to be my will, I would probably give you more stuff. Hold on. Steven, do you hear that? Da, 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 da. That, that is copyright the, uh, music. Harry Potter theme. Song. Hey! <laughs> oh, <I don't... laughs> that is the sound of copyrighted music that we cannot use because our next question comes from the wonderful. I can't Wizarding afford World. to license that. We really cannot. <laughs> it's probably a couple million. Um, it comes from the wonderful Wizarding World of Harry Potter. In Harry Potter, the titular character, Harry Potter. Oh. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> he uh, uh, names uh, exactly on point. In, I believe, the first movie... Do you movie, think they named the book after him, or do you think they named him after the book? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the look of sincerity really is, helps out like this at Drive and Go. Um, in the book Harry Potter, Harry discovers, hey, yo, I'm a wizard. But later on, he discovers that uh, more than a wizard, he's also rich AF. So um, he discovers he's a wizard, then rich, and then he discovers girls. Uh, in that order? Yeah, okay. yeah. with Cho mm. Chang, right? Oh, yeah. So he, I didn't like that bit. Like, I, I never read it's or so watched awkward. Harry Potter You movies. never God, read you Harry said, Potter? I didn't like that bit. I thought you were about to say, I didn't like that <laughs> bit. <laughs> no! And I was going to say, one, like, wow. whoa, no, no. Uh, two, for like, the one, for she's a people. fictional child. <laughs> <laughs> two, she's a wizard. She could come after you, <laughs> so be careful. Yeah. No! So you didn't like that bit? Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, it was a little shoehorned <laughs> yeah the offense with the fix <laughs> um, child okay it's not real so just a little bit of background about harry potter's inheritance i just thought it'd be an interesting thing to talk about um cool how, how did harry potter have such a large inheritance i thought this was a little fun little factoid so take this to your next dinner party guys here we go um a guy <laughs> look forward to having dinner outside of co COVID. right <laughs> so. um harry potter author jk rowling answered this question on pottermore in short the potter's family's vast amount of gold is due to harry's paternal ancestors being credited with the invention of several popular crucial potions used by the wizarding world including Pepper Up Potion, which is a cure for the common cold, except it makes your ears blow out steam. Um, Trade-offs. Skelligro, <laughs> which is used, I believe, in like the third movie, where he regrows his bones with the skeleton oh, yeah. juice stuff. Um, and this is called Slickeasy's Hair Potion, uh, which makes your hair nice and supple. I, I think it's Sleek Easy. That's probably what it is. Not Sleek Easy. <laughs> that sounds like a 70s yeah, hair product. It, like it sounds like right next to the Jerry you curl. You made it sound like Sleazy <laughs> instead of Sleek. Yeah. Um, but Easy. And running a massively successful potions business. This resulted in a steady stream of gold um, in galleons in both royalties and profits they, from the Potter family. So all their money was in gold? Um, it's in galleons, which is gold wizard pieces. Currency. Yeah, isn't oh. that the... I thought that was Spanish so currency. So wizard... Uh, yeah, it is. There's okay. nuts and... Or the, the, the pirate uh, galleons. Yeah, so wizarding currency is divided into three main coinages. So there's mm -hmm. a large gold coin... 
and there's like a medium silver and then and a small like, bronze. But they use gold. Yeah. But they use gold. It's Galleons like Olympic medals, and it's, but also different like, sizes. But it's like old. Yeah. It's like old style gold back currency. Yeah. It's like yeah, they, don't, they, have, they yeah. haven't floated their currency yet. Well, and it's and I think it's magic as well because otherwise they could just like duplicate it duplicate yeah you can't duplicate it. economics podcast yeah. i can make so many jokes right now yeah but i have nothing how have we nothing need to go back to the gold standard, standard. yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm a nerd but i'm not an economics podcast nerd no, i am no gold Dude, standard there's jokes. so many planet money oh, uh, free economics i don't care about any oh, they're of it so good you should so i love good. that there was a time when american issue we were heated about it i have a but, question okay, but it's like all gold that's what i have a question so okay Pretty much in the movie, I don't know if this is fully, fully, fully factual, but I'm pretty sure he walks into a bank. It's a book about a wizard. None of it's factual. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, factual, factual to factual. the fictional world. He walks into a bank with, I believe, like Hagrid, and like they just walk into the bank, and they're like, hey, this is Harry Potter, who is the son of Lily and James Potter, who died, and they had a big, fat bank account in this vault. And then the banker dude, who's like a little elf, he's like, great, right this way. And he takes him to a big old room filled with gold coins. How old is Harry in this case? Uh, he's like 13. Uh, yeah, I think he's like 10. Yeah, yeah. So they said a child. No, the he's like of... 8. Because uh, how long are you at Hogwarts? No, you, you get the letter when you're 10. So he's 10 years okay, old. Okay, he's 10. He's 10 years old. He is so, this is definitely not Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, you know, is that how the process works? No. 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 So no, no. what 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 would Harry's uh, what would that process look like so if Harry used the proper hopefully judicial Harry's system? Hopefully parents you set up a trust for him with a – so typically un, under a general rule, I think every state that anyone under 18 typically does not get full access to money because they don't have the right to contract. So a lot of times in Georgia, if there's no structure set up in a will or a trust like that, the court would appoint a conservator. Um, to monitor the child's assets until they turned 18, and then they get the whole thing. Okay. Um, so maybe Dumbledore is the conservator. Perhaps. I don't know. Um, Hagrid. It could it, be a trustee or conservator. Been, the bank could uh, be the trustee. Sirius Black may have been the conservator prior to his incarceration. Gotcha. Because he was Harry's godfather. Mm -hmm. Nice, James. I know. It's really solid. But if the bank's letting him see it, I mean, the bank probably... Oh, God. I'm going to assume this bank is operating within traditional fiduciary law. Maybe the parents set up a trust and appointed the bank as a trustee, okay. and they're just showing him his stuff. I mean, in reality, the bank is run by vaguely anti-semitic yep uh what are they like they're like elves or uh, goblins not elves, or goblins yeah, yeah they're like goblins that. yeah yeah there's, are a they... of, there's a lot of tropes going on yeah i can't believe that a woman who's transphobic is also wrote anti-semitic <laughs> characters yeah i can't yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> well, but isn't there also something These where are the um, monkeys in harry potter the, the vaults Aren't some of the vaults like keyed to individuals? Like they'll only open for certain people. Yeah. So, so, so there's like a magic way of proving that you're Harry Potter. So oh, some sort okay. Of, that's so, probably what oh, it is. Also yeah, is. you're right. There also, also right um, another thing too, because the question is, you know, if you could just like walk up and be like, "Hey, uh, it's me, Harry Potter," mm -hmm. and they'd be like, "Is you it? You must though? be Harry Potter." Uh, he has a very distinctive scar. Yeah. So hold on. So yeah, that's a great point. Let's say I'm very famous for having a big like Gorbachev effect on my face. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't yeah. know why that yeah. came. You're a real the Gorbachev. Go ahead. That came to mind. Let's say I'm yeah. world famous, right? <laughs> Everyone knows me for my distinctive facial uh, marking. Um, is that like enough proof to a court that like you know like hey this is actually the guy who he says he is? We have like, DNA tests now. Okay. <laughs> DNA is easier. Okay. Or I guess is it proof to the bank? Would the bank take that on face value? Like, no. Oh, he okay. is who he says he okay. is. Okay, so typically banks don't like to be sued. And letting <laughs> someone in your bank on a hunt and letting them walk out with like an armful of gold it's probably a no -no. seems like you, a bad. Usually what you're going to wind up having to do is you're going to have to wind up pulling things like birth certificates and other public documents. They want a court to, order, ideally. Gotcha. Yeah. It, like it, a trust, yeah, it's going to have to go to the fun. court and then for the court to do it, they're going to want to see things like birth certificates, social gotcha. security stuff. Yeah. But I would, I would hope that, I, I just could be optimistic that Harry's parents have a trust it could be a dynasty trust so that's my because, next question it could have been way up the line to set up a trust and his parents were just mere beneficiaries as well and they're all just doing income from it mm -hmm. um god i hope they were good well i, I imagine the trust is a it's perpetuities thing we're kidding towards but they worked around they have a wait and see rule in this so weird place my next question <laughs> Although I, I do think it should be said, you know, I, I bet I bet like a chapter about like, you know, then then Harry checked in with like the local government to find mm -hmm. his social security card. A and like <laughs> upon, upon a trip to the court of normal, 
<laughs> or sorry, Court of Ordinary. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I love some it's, states that have it. in England. Yeah, but some, so some states have like courts of ordinary too. School. And some states have like surrogate's court and orphan's court. Yeah. And yeah. Ordin- court. What Georgia, I'm saying is oh, Georgia, Harry Potter would crush it at the orphan's Georgia, court. The Georgia, before the, the <laughs> 70s or 80s, the Georgia pro- probate courts in Georgia used to be called courts of the ordinary. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that is. Um, it's, we'll talk about it. It means the point. exact same thing as probate does. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, I'm just saying that I don't think that chapter would have been very interesting. It's not a surprise to me that it didn't make it into the book. What if what if the judge's gavel floats on its own? Ah, that'd be cool. And he waits wait, three wait, weeks. Wait, are you telling me that Harry Potter price. does not have legal drama in it, <laughs> or more? Well, I more, mean, it does. Or more tellingly, legal. Um, There's a jailbreak. St- does that count? Yeah. yeah, but boring legal stuff like no, the, like transit, like writing. Fidu- writing fiduciary law. No one Honestly, wants to... there's a lot of like it's, Harry uh, Potter is actually, a very deep. Well, uh, I can't. I think is this one of your questions with the house? Um, yeah, and that's okay. that comes later. Okay. Um, before we get there, let's say Lily and James Potter walk into your office, Stephen, and they say, "Hey, you know, we're 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 having a big fight with the guy called the Dark Lord, who's like really famous for murdering a lot of folks." And so, like, does. we really need to figure this stuff out. Help us make a estate plan. Um, they have again. They have the, somebody on Reddit estimated that it's like about two million dollars in like gold in this bank. Um, I think they also own like a house, but I don't really know. That's it's it. Easy. Yeah, it's not that much. You would think they'd have more. Yeah, I know. Business. Yeah, they they they, had, they cured the cold. Well, no, no, they have two million cash. Oh, right. they, they, have they, have, they have other liquid. assets. Okay. Yeah. Actually, no, like that's like the family estate. Like the, the Potters themselves they didn't actually, they're not responsible the, for it. The I mean, if they want to give me two, if I had two million, I'd be happy. But nonetheless, it's, 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 it's like a really distant relative of Harry's that like ran the okay. potions business. Okay. Same, like they, Longhorn potion they something. In, they come like, in, they're yeah. like, we have a, we have two million in gold all yeah. sitting in a room yeah. in a bank. Yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what do you set up for them as an the estate trust. planning attorney? Okay. Yeah. Um, depending on how we want to set it up, so either, either yeah, we set up a trust typically. Um, the idea would be is to figure out how to successfully transition it if you both die in a fight with the dark. Was he a dark knight? Dark lord? Dark lord. <laughs> dark knight. No, Batman's, Bat- Batman's not involved. <laughs> Batman's actually pretty pro orphan, so he'd be on Harry's side. <laughs> but, like, but the goal is to make sure they have a responsible fiduciary. And in this case, I would probably still stick with appointing a um, corporate fiduciary, like in the bank. So they have a cold banker who makes cold-hearted decisions like about your money, which is exactly what a kid should have. Yeah. Um. Someone should be like, I mean, the goal is to give them the same mm, lifestyle, but no. like when a kid comes out, it's like, I want to go buy a Ferrari. No. That's you. You. you I want a cold-hearted trustee for my clients who will say, that's stupid. Here's a yeah. 1985 Nissan Sentra. I, <laughs> James disagrees. I am. Not, if someone's telling me, family we're in a trustees fight are the worst against in the fight. he who must not be named. I'm not going to say, well, yeah, let's just show up with a, a wizard and corporate fiduciary because oh. the Death Eaters actually infiltrated the Ministry of Magic and a lot of <laughs> other large magic corporations. So for me, if, if we're fighting what amounts to a guerrilla war against a well-established, powerful entity, I want an individual that I trust deeply to be the trustee for my child. Yeah. So I would choose Dumbledore. Yep. Um, I, I <laughs> might go with Hagrid, but I think he's a little simple. He's too soft. That's exactly he's, what I was going to say. Uh, it, not only he's too soft, he's a little too simple. I think Dumbledore, though. Plus, Dumbledore's like, what, like 600 years old? Like, I don't know. He knows what's going on. Yeah. I'm but I would just I'm think. I'm a little horrified <laughs> that Actually, I'm all thinking of this just happened. Yeah. I'm so impressed. And that was awesome. Yeah. Dumbledore is also knocking on me. But no, I think I think that Harry comes on his like 13th birthday to Hagrid, and he's like, hey, Hagrid, I want the new Firebolt, but I want 20 of them for the whole Quidditch team. Hagrid's yeah. a soft and he'll be like, okay, sounds great. And he'll pay that. When is in- Dumbledore, I don't know anything about these people. Yeah. Honestly, if they're like Dumbledore, it's like, fine, Dumbledore. Is Dumbledore trustworthy? <laughs> would you trust Dumbledore with your yeah. money? Yeah. <laughs> I would trust Dumbledore with anything, man. Dumbledore's a G. He's awesome. Yeah. Um, Cool. Okay, great. So make a trust. Set up a, fid- uh, a I'm sorry. Have a fiduciary. A fiduciary. And that's a trustee in this case. A person who is responsible if uh, they are Hopefully, they will eventually die. I think yeah. the wizards say then, they live forever. Uh, no, they don't live forever. Okay, they, when they, they eventually they die, they live regardless. for a long time. But they don't live forever unless you've um, put your soul in the. But they'll part. do all those other things. But <laughs> they'll also name guardians for yeah. Harry Potter upon their insane death. Yeah. Um, but you would also want the fiduciary to have the power to make decisions about the family business as well, so that way it can continue to operate. And you may stay healthy it, while Harry lives. You may. Up. Gotcha. Um, 
bifurcate that you may have separate management for the business and for the trust just to yeah. clarify the business i think does no longer i mean the business was from a d distant relative and just the fortune exists i think or like the fortune well, you better you better have your fiduciary is a good at investing it because that two million dollars not gonna go that you long. have to make it stretch yeah god i hate saying that's such a douchey thing to say when people come and it's like i have a million dollars and like you can literally burn a million dollars if your kid's like an infant yeah. By by the time they turn eighteen. It's not even like yeah. cynical, but you just need yeah, to be but stuff's savvy. expensive. Stuff is expensive. As and inflation is real. You need to make sure your trustee can invest it and recap mm -hmm. recapture the growth as opposed and what happens in Georgia with a court appointed concern is that they're not allowed to invest in anything more dramatic than like a money market account. And that might be if the court's feeling liberal with it later in the book series harry potter writes a twenty five thousand dollar check to fred and george weasley who open up he's this, not like, legally allowed to write a check well i don't know if he writes a check but he gives them like twenty five thousand dollars in galleons like to like Although, go and open. In, 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 in our world a minor shouldn't be shouldn't writing checks write a check. i mean no. theoretically they could but it might be avoidable agreement yeah so in in that situation harry would have to bring the investment opportunity to the attention of his trustee yeah Yes. Of the trustee who could then make that distribution. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. What is the what is the shop again? It's like a shop. It's like a trick a trust shop. For some reason. It's like a, a it's a joke and prank shop. Exactly. Like a magical prank shop. Okay. Yeah. And they sell like and they crush it. Yeah. They do crush oh. it. And then yeah. he gets his ear ripped off. It's not good. Yeah. Um. Then one dies. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. Cool. Um. Later in the series. Spoiler alert for Harry Potter. Go he read dies. the book. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, technically, Avengers. yes, he does. <laughs> actually, yeah. Technically, oh. he dies, but he's brought back. Yeah. Oh well, through, so actually, uh, major spoiler through the magic of mother's love. Yeah, that also I didn't like that. I thought that was such a stupid plot point. Anyway, I think you. Might, I don't. I've not read it, but I. I'm now way less likely to read it. Yeah, with like a deuce, ex, deuce ex machina at the end, like that. Mm. Um. Yeah, I hated that. Like the, the end doesn't make any sense. Like oh, suddenly magic. And I guess it's I, I a guess, actually, protective yeah. spell that was placed on him by his mother, who gave up her own life in order to make the most protective spell. Because she knew the Dark Lord was going to be coming for him. Yeah, because he's a Horcrux or whatever. Okay, yeah. sorry, me cuffed a question. Um, you're fine. Um, <laughs> oh wait, no, like wait, never mind. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> Oscar. Start the clip here. <laughs> um, okay, cool. To get back uh, to the thing, um, later in the series, spoiler, major spoiler for Harry Potter, Sirius Black gets hit with a big old bolt of energy blasts, and he goes, yes. no, he's murked. He gets marked hard. Um, he owns a house, right? He's he's Harry's godfather. In his will, he wills the house to Harry Potter. Um, Harry Potter decides, hey, man, I don't want my dead godfather's house because it's, like, been used for some bad stuff and some bad mm -hmm. juju, and he doesn't really want to have it, right? He lets um, the Order of the Phoenix, which is, like, the uh, superhero team of wizards that is trying to defeat the Dark Lord, They he's like, yeah, use it as a clubhouse, but after that's done, I don't really want the house. So my question is... Um, if someone is willed something like a property or a home um, and they do not want to have it, what legally happens to the property? So, oh, yeah. you can renounce an inheritance um, under mm -hmm. Georgia law in particular. And some reason there's very particular reasons people might renounce as generally. So there's actually limitations on renunciation time wise as far as like. Like if you owe a tax bill, for example, you have to renounce within a narrow amount of time so the government doesn't try to use the inheritance to pay the tax bill uh, or, or random stuff like that. But barring all those kind of things, you just don't want the property. Mm -hmm. um, you can renounce your inheritance and then it would go as if you had predeceased the person who actually died. Okay, so, so it goes to your heirs. It would go to their... Oh, well, it go, mm -hmm. uh, the will said if that person doesn't survive me, then it goes to this new person, then it would go to that person. Gotcha. Right. So if, like, if the will says... You know, I'm giving my house to my godson Harry. Um, if he should predecease me, it would go to his heirs. Yeah. Then it would go to his heirs. Gotcha. But I could also say I'm going to give it to my godson Harry. If he should predecease me, I give it to my hell self creature. Then Next Harry more. could renounce it, and it would go to creature the house elf. Yes. James, you're a badass. And because the house presumably has some clothing in it, yeah. creature would then become a free elf. Yes. So there's two uh, the alternatively. <laughs> Steve is just like, yes. This, this yeah, like a ridiculous premise that, if, from a book that now, I've never and, heard. And if, if, if there was no, uh, you know, if you didn't have any heirs, there's no one else to go say, to, yeah. it would go into the residue of the estate. Yeah, you could either. Yeah, an alternative to renouncing is some people often accept it. And then gift it or sell it or whatever if you don't really want it. Right. But realistically, the most cynical people I could, most cynical advice I could tell someone if they're going to get rid of it is to 
accept the donate, accept the house, then donate to charity and accept a tax write off. Yeah, it's a good good mm-hmm. strategy. If you're a five hundred one c three for these weirdos, then I would um, recommend that he fund it for that. Yeah, right. Um, cool. Well, great. That wraps up our Harry Potter discussion. Thank you. Thank God for your insight. <laughs> Thank like, God. I love Harry Potter. Come on, Steven. It's good. It's good. Good book. Yeah, just embrace right. it, man. We've got. Um, if J.K. Rowling were a terrible person, I would be way more likely to start it. Yeah. Yeah. Not, she's I'm kind of burning a lot of bridges. This yeah. is one of those, like, I think this, for a lot of people, this is, like, a very big, like, how do you separate art from artist situation? Mm-hmm. And, like, how far can you go? Mm-hmm. Yes. I think for people that were not into Harry Potter, they're totally writing it off. But for so many people, like, that was their childhood. Yeah. And, like, like there are a lot of trans people out there where yes. like harry potter made them feel okay about who they are and now they're just like oh no oh no yeah. yikes yeah. yeah it's like liking the cosby show or in michael jackson's music now it's troubling mm-hmm. no harry children potter. like woody no no children grew up in woody allen movies so i think it's fine but like <laughs> harry potter is actually my age like the character was born the same year i was born and each book was released like as i was going through school how many times did your parents catch you trying to make, give yourself a little lightning bolt <laughs> and like noah stop no but like you know every year it was like at the new book i feel and, like, so I old like, right now like, <laughs> yeah. i remember yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter. I yeah. remember you something that happened when when you were eight. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. You're fine. Here we go. Last question of the episode. Here we go. It's going to be a big juicy one. It's not that juicy or interesting. No. No, it's very interesting. It, mm. Okay, let's start I again. I have no idea what the question is. <laughs> I was like, Last yeah. question of the show. Spoiler alert. It's also about Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter and no, this one's like for Steven. Category for a thousand. <laughs> um, cool. How much does it cost to have a lawyer be the executor of your will? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I mean, okay. In, in most states, the executor of the will, if if the will states it, the lawyer is not acting in their capacity as a lawyer. They're acting in capacity as the executor. So they're mm-hmm. typically going to be compensated based on what an executor would normally earn. In Georgia, a lot of that actually is like codified. It's like two and a half percent of what they gather, two and a half percent of what they distribute. Really? Um, okay, so the executor gets paid from the estate. Like the executor this, sucks. Yes. You should get paid. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot um, of work. Unless unless the will says otherwise, but and right. the lawyer may be able to get additional compensation for the stuff they do as a lawyer, but they would have to very carefully compartmentalize it. And honestly, I would. Generally, there's a, there's a thing called extraordinary compensation you can ask the court for. I would ask the court to approve the compensation before I did it and someone got pissed at me. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, I, I, as a lawyer who's been an executor before, um, it's just I, I just took regular compensation. Okay. And then I got reimbursed because I paid for a lot of shit for this guy yeah. to make mm-hmm. sure that it worked. So I got reimbursed for the cost for like making sure his ashes got shipped and this and that. Um, yeah. like that. So. Would you when when you're selecting an executor, um, is a lawyer a good person to select, um, or maybe you know they're going to charge as good as any it, other? It can yeah. be. I think it would need to be a lawyer who Ideally knows what a, they're doing. Yeah, idea. Yeah, exa- exactly. It'd be a, it could be a lawyer, preferably a lawyer who did not write the will, mm-hmm. just in case there's a conflict of interest. Um, but um, if they can, if like, but honestly, uh, most lawyers don't like it because it's a pain in the butt to deal and, with. And if it's like a longer term thing, it might also make sense to make sure the person you're asking has some kind of financial literacy as well. Yes, because um, that's another part of it too. Is is they get a percentage of what comes in, a percentage of what goes out, and I believe any income that is is it income generated by property that they're managing, they get an Something additional like percentage. Yeah, it's like wow. I think it's I think yeah. it's three percent. So basically, it's like you get paid based on how much work you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the amount of work you're doing is based on the amount of money. It's commensurate to work. And yeah. A lot of lawyers will not accept estates that are small states because a small estate and a big estate are often the same amount of work. Right. A ten thousand dollar estate and a ten million dollar estate have a lot of the same work qualities, except one pays you, one can pay you more than the other. Right. Gotcha. And I wouldn't do it. I would just cynically, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. I would not ever manage a small estate again. Yeah, because it's so much work. And, and usually, in those small estates, it typically also is people want their money faster because they yeah. need it. Yeah, exactly. So people um, yeah. people burn up your phone and be like, no, we have to wait three months. We have to do this. We have to do that. You'll get paid. You'll get this eventually. So something right. like that. One suggestion that I've heard you make multiple times is like, you do not want a um, emotionally attached, involved person um, as the executor That's of correct. the estate. 
Um, so if you're not suggesting a lawyer primarily, it could be right? a lawyer. Um, but let's say the estate's pretty small. Who would you suggest instead For of a super lawyer? Super small estates, I'm okay with family members. But there's a dynamic that you have to recognize mm -hmm. that if you have, like, say, three children or whatever, and one si you have to know how these people's dynamics work with each other. Mm -hmm. It can be very, very annoying for one sibling to be cutting checks to the other siblings. Mm -hmm. It can really have a weird dynamic. So you better have it really laid out as humanly possible. And I, I might yeah. also argue with a $10,000 estate. We could probably work on some ways to avoid probate entirely mm -hmm. um, for an estate of like a, a, mo a more modest estate. Yeah. And, and I think if you are going to have to put one of your kids as your executor, it makes sense if your family situation allows to just have a nice straightforward conversation yes. about the decision you're making. Get consensus. And, you know, like, like what, what does this decision mean and, and what does it not mean? Right, so like, it means that we're asking this person to be the ex executor. It does not mean that they're our favorite. Or does, just, does that mean know. they're getting more? Oh, they might get right. more money because it, it, it also doesn't mean. Yeah, like, it, it doesn't. So sometimes they think it'll, they're waiving their inheritance. Like, no, 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 they're just in charge. You will right. get your part of the estate. Mm -hmm. That's what the will or whatever says. But it can also be like they might get an executor's fees. Mm -hmm. Lots of times they can. You can you can waive those fees. And if the child agrees outright ahead of time to yeah. waive, we might actually put in a will there will be no compensation if this person's the executor. For the executor. They've, right. they've agreed to waive their compensation so that they can shut yeah. their siblings up. Yeah. Or, or I don't know. I, I, I would say it's because that's the kind of... No, it makes if, sense. If, 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 you, if, you're, if you have like 12-year-old kids who are fighting over the biggest piece of cake, there's a good chance that when they're 70, they're going to be fighting over the biggest piece of cake. Right. And that dynamic will carry over into a probate. So that's the main reason Like I usually recommend as someone dispassionate, but if they're on the same page or something like that, then sure. But for bigger things, or particularly for things where you're managing young children or longer term things, and you're going to want to get professional in. And, and for a trustee, there's corporations that literally do it. You can go like a U.S. trust, Northern trust, um, mm -hmm. any like a lot of companies with the word trust in them are literally full time trustees. Cool. Um, and they would they do that for a fee. But the fee is that they're, the upside of their service is that they're also tied to investment banks so that they can actually grow the body of the trust. Oh, that's cool. Right. So if it takes a while to actually to administer the estate and to probate everything, they can actually be doing yeah. something with that money and, to help it grow. And they That's are cool. professionals. They'll get your, you get the annual reports, you get this and that. Right. They won't breach your fiduciary duty on all that good. And they do, they have a ton of insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, but all those, all those considerations that you would make that if you had a reason, even a modest to large estate, I would seriously look into bringing in a neutral fiduciary. I, especially if your beneficiaries are younger, your children, there's one thing that's like, I'm married. I have no children. It's one thing. Like my husband does not need a trustee to guard his money for him, unless he's going to get remarried. Then I then he does. No, <laughs> no, no. But like, just generally though. But like, you can, your situation varies. That yeah. sounds like one of those businesses that like you know when you're fresh out of college, like looking for a job, like you would never even think of that. That is a business, right? Like these. Oh, are, this totally is a group. Is. This is a group of professional trustees mm -hmm. uh, that like you know that just focus on uh, like this very specific aspect of estate law i don't know it's like the guy who makes like the bolts for like this particular thing yeah, for this car for it. yeah, yeah. For it. it's, cool. uh, it's a it, if yeah. you don't know what you're doing it's it can be very difficult and if mm -hmm. you know what you're doing it can be very straightforward mm -hmm. so yes. there, it's, it's just like how you go to an attorney who does estate plans for your estate plan right you you go to someone who knows what they're doing and it's much easier for them to do it right yeah, yeah. we have our lane i, I, I write it. trust mm -hmm. someone implements trust mm -hmm. right come with a traffic ticket i will give you the name of a very i actually have a really great attorney who i'll refer you to Sounds that will great. take care of it because i don't she actually I fixed my traffic my ticket because i went to the court myself and i realized crap and she happened to be there dealing with another case and she fixed my ticket oh that's super nice so there you go there's better people for everything. Yeah. I can't emphasize enough that the hire a plumber the better. to do your plumbing. That yes, hire like, more to do your plumbing. Yeah. Don't have them wire your house. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let's talk about death and taxes. If you enjoyed this, let us know. Post a comment. If you could help us share this, that would be fantastic. If you're watching on Facebook, hit the share button because that's awesome. It'd be really cool to have like a little personal endorsement of like, hey, my name's Sally Lou, and I enjoyed this. You should check this out. Just like. You might enjoy this. I enjoy this. Check it out. Um, also, give us a like, react to it or whatever. If you're watching on YouTube, post a comment, like, and uh, subscribe. Turn that damn bell on because I like that little bell. You can get a little notification. Hey, there's a little new video about death and taxes. Um, 
if you're listening on a podcasting app, if you could give us a five star review, that would be great. Um, you know, maybe the words that you write aren't super nice, right? But at least put those five stars in there so that our, our star rating goes up. Be nice. Tell right? me about Harry Potter. In yeah. Your comment. Just be oh. like. Just be like. Just tell me. Uh, does in your comment? Just write the. Something that I will understand. Yeah, very and specifically. <laughs> very specific about like the financial aspects of Harry I'll Potter. I'll write it by James and Noah. Yeah. If you were to invent, if you were to open a business in Harry Potter's Wizarding World that you think would take off really well, that you you think is an untapped market for the wizards, what would you do? Assuming magic's real as well. Maybe it's like a magical estate planning business. That'd be cool, right? Wouldn't that be sweet? You like, lost me like four minutes ago. Really? <laughs> <laughs> No, like we could like make horcruxes for people. I think it'd be sick. Um, you have to a... murder someone to make a horcrux. Well, um, maybe we're a little you? shady. I don't know. I don't think so. You have to murder no, someone. Wait. Or could they uh, you're, you have to, like, you're breaking up, your up a portion of your soul. I thought yeah. you had to kill someone to make a horcrux. I don't know. Well, we could specialize that in that. I don't we know. could specialize in breaking apart people's I'm souls. I'm gonna pretend to not know this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, again, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Hey, um, before you leave, we created a PDF. It is the first link in the description. The PDF tells you all of the mistakes that you should avoid when thinking about planning your estate. James and Steven wrote it, and it is basically a summary of a lot of the problems that we've seen people encounter when thinking about estate planning. Go check out that PDF. It will really help you if you do nothing uh, to plan your estate. At least read that so that you know like the important stuff that you should not mess up because... Yeah, this is hard. If you've listened to these guys talk, you know. They know a lot of things because they need to because this is hard. It's not easy. <laughs> this is the longest it call is, to it's action long. I don't care. I've ever seen. It's 6.30. I'm uh, 6.44. I got to go home. At this point, the people have turned off their podcast apps. The They've hit the skip 30 seconds thing a couple times. <laughs> no, it's still going. Because you got to get to the end of the episode so it's marked played. It doesn't replay later. True. Yes. But they've guys, hit that I button. need a Patreon. So to like, Let's to, get I, I need ad free ver- I need ads so I can have an ad free version. <laughs> Guys, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.